Balancing this system with 36, 37 radiators on is quite the challenge, to be honest. The hottest point on this rad is 37 degrees. The lowest temperature on the return, 35. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and turn these ones down to around 30, 31 degrees. Just on the lock shield wheels, because these none of these rads have got thermostatic valves on, which is Mason's obviously mentioned it to the customer. So I've turned that all the way down and just cracked it a quarter of a turn. And I'm gonna do that with that one, this one, I think this one's the same. So we balance these rads down, push the temperature down to around 30 degrees, which will then in turn push the heat further round into the building because it hasn't got to come here as much. As we sort of worked out, there's three zones on this heating system, all controlled by one stat, which is down in one of the rooms, which they're gonna to have to move because that, that, when that room comes up to temperature, it will shut the whole building off. <laughs> Right, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody had a brilliant Christmas, brilliant New Year, and is raring to go into 2023 and to smash it. I'm currently sat in the back of my van because every year before I go back to work, I like to clean my van out because as you can see, it is an absolute pigsty because leading into Christmas, I was that busy, just chucked everything in the van. I'm sure a few of you have done it. Chucked everything in the van, said, right, that's enough. I'll assess that, I'll sort it out in the new year. So today is my day for sorting all that out. But today's video is uh, a job that I did between Christmas and New Year with a mate of mine, Mason, MJH Plumbing Services. Um, it was a 36 radiator heating system in a child's nursery. The customers said that some of the rads weren't getting hot, the system was never really hot, never heated the building. So we went there, had a look at it. A few of the rads had issues with them. Uh, there was an issue with the pump, etc., which you'll see in the video. But we spent two days there first day cleaning it all through with chemicals second day flushing it all through with the thorough flush kit um, with some great results so i will leave you to watch it now i'll apologize at the start and during the video the lighting inside this house sort of flickers something to do with the frame rate or something on my camera but anyway it flickers slightly it does stop but it's uh, a little bit annoying it was doing my editing while i was editing the video up but hope you enjoy it as always drop me a comment hit the subscribe button hit the like button um, we've got some good things coming in 2023 for the channel and as always appreciate all your support so enough waffle from me let's get on with it so we're back we've had christmas off we're currently in the little break between christmas and new year and i've had a phone call just before christmas from a mate who's a plumber that i've met through social media side of stuff and he basically said to me he's got a big job at a children's nursery 36 radiators that need the whole system flushing through and he said basically will it give me a hand will i give him a hand on it so we sorted it all out we're coming between christmas and new year ready to get it done no one's here i've just got to be a little bit careful of what i film and what i don't um, we've been round, turn the heating on, everywhere gets warm, there's a couple of rads that don't that we've got to have a look at. But as a whole, it's not too bad. So we've got a boiler up on the top floor, and then round here, we have got, Mason will be round here somewhere, pretending to look busy. There he is, look, running off. Uh, inside here, we've got where the old boiler for the place used to be. Now what they've done, they've converted this into a bit of a, bit of a, um, a plant room, you've got a low loss header, you've got a mains pump which is pumping the main primaries, got a heating, uh, hot water pump there which is doing the, the cylinder up on the top, but we've got three zone valves, one, two, three there which go off and do the separate circuits. Now fortunately what we had here was, you took that off mate, oh here it is, the filter, magnetic filter that was in place, what we've done, we've shut it off here, we're going to connect the magna cleanse unit into here, which we've got set up here, Macy's brand new one. Then what we'll do, we've got four litres of cleaner to go into the system. As I said, it's 36 rads, 36, 37 rads on the system. We'll get that into the system, get it pumping round, go around the radiators, agitate them, and shut them off one by one or two by two because the system's so big, and then make sure every single rad is flushed through and hopefully get a good bit of crap out. But what we'll do, we'll do that today. We'll concentrate on that today, and then we'll come back tomorrow with a thorough flush, connect that into the system, flush the whole system completely clean, remains water, and then again, like I always do with the Magna Cleanse, put it onto the dump side of the thorough flush. So again, it's still going through that. But yeah, we'll get it connected into here now, and then uh, begin getting some cleaner into the system. 
So Mace is in there at the minute, connecting. It's a bit of a squeeze with two big lads trying to get in a little cupboard like this. So Mace is connecting. With them AD Magna pens, you get a little connector unit which is connecting on perfectly there. And then what we'll do is these cam locks then connect onto adapter that Mace is putting on there. And then we've, I say we've got four pots of cleaner, MC3, to go in the system and just begin to start pumping round all the rads. But we've got, uh, let me just set you in. We've had to take all the covers off the front of the rads. There's a rad behind here, so we've stacked it in the wrong place. But it's like this room here. Got one, two, three, four rads. They're getting, they're getting lukewarm, but they're not getting massively hot. So I will also, I'll get my thermal imaging camera out and we can go round and just see exactly if there's any build up in the bottom of them and whatnot. But once he's got that connected in. Where are we, mate? We on? Hey, mate. Last one. There we go, we're in. Sorted. So that's them two connected onto that adapter unit and then obviously we've got them shut off there so we can turn the water back onto on them valves so we just filled both of them pots up now with a cleaner because everything's going to be flushed through them anyway so we just fill them up and away we go don't touch the magnets oh, honestly you put them two together they're rock hard and they're stuck together As I said, tomorrow we'll leave this running overnight, but tomorrow we'll fix the thorough flush kit onto it once all the cleaners done its thing. Get the thorough flush kit on, flush the whole lot, mains, uh, water going through it, get it completely crystal clear. So we've opened it up on the actual adapter, so we'll open this one up. Done, mate. Vent the top of it out, and you'll see, begin to see the heating water coming in. We'll have to go upstairs as well and top it up because it is on a pressurised system. Sure. They both open it there, Maker. Yeah, just open the last one now. So you'll see it now with it. There you go. So that's now pumping through. These, I'll get my thermal imaging in a minute, but you can see the cleaner that's gone in has now shot that way in round through the system. let it do its thing. So I'm just going around now with the thermal imaging. This one's getting a little bit of heat coming into it, as you can see. But this one, this is one of the ones they reported being cold. I don't know if you can pick that up. It was turned off, so we've just, it's just getting a tiny little bit of heat coming down in that corner at the minute. And if you can see it on that, I'll get my other camera out in a minute, which is a bit better to see on the video. But yeah, it's beginning to get a bit of heat in it now. Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. You can see the heat now coming across the top of that rad. Just coming in on the left-hand side, across the top. So yeah, we'll leave that one now. Get some heat in it. That one's nice and warm. Mace is just trying to get his little dainty hands into there, look. Get some heat in that one. That one's red hot as well. So we've got the heat in that rad there. Another rad here, is nice and warm. We've just opened up that rad there, and you can see the heat just beginning to come through. But you can also see on this camera, if you can pick it up, see the pipe runs in the floor going off to feed that rad, then they come along and then over to feed that rad there. But yeah, you can see the heat in this rad here. There's a lot of them, a lot of them on this job. Um, they seem to be have turned them off. Obviously this is a big one of the kids' rooms. There's a rad there, rad there. 
that one there and that one there. That one was off. Um, obviously the kids are playing there. They do, they have got covers on all these rads. We've had them removed ready for today. But, um, you know, they're complaining about coldness, but if the covers are on and they're screwed on, obviously the, the workers within the nursery aren't gonna unscrew the covers to, to take them all off. So that rag could have been off for ages, but it's now on working as of that one is. But at the minute we've still got the system running up. It's probably been on half an hour or so just letting that cleaner get into it and uh, we'll go around shortly and agitate all the rads as well just to get rid of any crap that's in the system right we've had the heating running now for probably a good two and a half three hours and what we've done we've isolated this left hand side of the building mace is just in there agitating one of the rads but we're going through we're shutting off every rad or every single rad and leaving one open turning it on agitating it then going to the next one, that one on, that one off, and working our way around to all the radiators in the system. So we've done these two in here. Mace is just tapping this one. You can get the agitator that connects onto the bottom of your SDS drill, which I've got, Mace has got it as well, but I find for things like this, just a rubber mallet like that, and it works a treat because you're not rattling them so hard. I've got it in case we need it, but that rubber mallet does the trick see if you can make it out it's just getting all the bits from the bottom of that rad circulating it through and then the magnet cleanses connect it up to the system out there so it will catch all the bits we'll do this one do that one and then i think there's another couple of rads to do this side yeah there's a couple more down here that's it few in here, we'll get these done and then we'll move to the other side of the building, start doing them and then we've got the top floor to do as well so it's just labour intense, it takes time, that's why having two of us here doing it is perfect. So we're about halfway through now, we've done the whole of downstairs that side, we're upstairs now, we've done all of them that side, we're just coming to do this one, then there's three more rads through there and then we're going to concentrate on the other side downstairs but it is I say we've got the rubber mallet just give it a, a knock along the bottom of them this, this one we've looked with the thermal imaging it's not too bad this one but it's always worth just giving them a little bit of a tap But what they're finding here is, and like I've just said to Mason with it, once the covers are on, because they're convecting rads, obviously the heat is meant to come up. Showers are just sapping all the heat out of it. So what I've said is, if he mentions it to the woman, he's possibly cut just a hole in the top, put some mesh underneath so you can't drop anything down. And that'll allow the heat to come through the top and radiate back around the room a lot better. So there we go, that is every single radiator in the building flushed through. We shut, in essence, we've shut all of them down, opened each one up individually and flushed each one through. Agitated it with the uh, rubber mallet. So everything has run through the Magna Cleanse where we've connected it into the, uh, into the heating system. So what we'll do now is open up every single radiator and crank the heating right up and get the rest of the system all up running so it's nice and hot and let the magna cleanse do its thing overnight we'll have the heating set to come on for maybe half an hour every hour every two hours so that it will circulate around overnight while we're not here then tomorrow we can come and check how we're looking in the magna cleanse unit and then we can attach a thorough flush and begin flushing the chemicals out, flushing everything out of the system. With the thorough flush, get the complete system flushed out and all the chemicals removed. Right, end of day one. Um, we've had the chemicals in all day, probably six hours now or so. We've shut all the rads off, agitated each one, so everything that's gone through that rad has come through the Magna Cleanse unit. Now, we were gonna wait, because this is gonna be on tonight, we're gonna leave it on. We was gonna wait till tomorrow, but Mace was dying to see, weren't you Mace? Dying. Mace was dying to see how much we caught just from today. So, it's running this way on this one as opposed to going in 
and out is coming in that one and out that one so this is the second magnet it will go through as you can see it's caught a fair bit of crap on that but what we're going to do we're going to leave them on overnight um, with the crap on them to be honest and then this is the second one it's caught a fair old bit but then tomorrow we'll come and check them again or what do you reckon we should do mate do you reckon we should clean them up clean them up and then in the morning we'll see how much we've done again uh, could do shall we yeah fuck it right what we'll do we'll clean them off so this is the end of the first day we'll clean these off and then we'll know that's from agitating the rads and then we can um, have a look in the morning what it's done overnight of its own sort of own sort of accord so let's scrape that shit into a tub <laughs> so mace is taking the glory oh, yes. what we're going to do we're going to scrape all this shit off into this little tub and then tomorrow we can see what more's come to the system overnight don't look like a buck. Yeah, don't look like a buck, but once you get that on there, that's it. So that was all the magnetite and iron filings and, and stuff that has been in the radar. As you know, when like a rad breaks down over time, like that. clean that one up a bit more. Yeah, I yeah, love that one. Give that one a clean under the tap, into the bucket, into another bucket. Get rid of the old beads off there. There you go. So that is all the crap that we'll get into, like your, your zone valves, your, your pumps, your thermostatic valves, all that sort of stuff, and seize Heat it up. exchanger on your board. Heat exchanger, yeah, sitting there. So we'll get these cleaned up, and then we can see, get that wiped off there, and we can see what, system's going to catch on its own accord overnight there we go it's all the shit so we've wiped them clean now mate's just doing his one and we'll leave that running again overnight and see what they'll catch when we're back in the morning Right, day two, we're back at this nursery, ready to see what the Magna Cleansers caught last night. As I said earlier in the video, we left it on during the night. We had the timing of the heating coming on and off at various timings to kick in, to kick out, to just catch any more crap that is in the system. And then today, we're going to take the Magna Cleanse off, put the Thorough Flush system on, and then attach the Magna Cleanse to the dump hose on the Thorough Flush. So we can now flush the whole system with mains cold water get everything out of it and then when that's done we can then fill it up we've got uh three liters of inhibitors to go in on this one just because it's a bit of an old system and we want it to stay as fresh as it can do so i'm just waiting for mason to turn up if you're on instagram uh give mason a follow i'll put all the details in the description below and you'll uh see a bit of content that he puts out he's a young lad relatively newish to working for himself and he's doing a lot of sort of breakdown stuff and uh, landlord sort of stuff so we're just waiting for it to turn up now and we can get in there and see what sort of temperature the whole building is as it's been on overnight so we're on day two we left it running last night as i said and we came this morning a couple of rads are a little bit tepid a lot of them are warm we checked the magna cleanse unit again we've hooked up to the thorough flush at the minute but we checked it there was a little bit more crap come out of the system we replaced this pump because the one that was on we came this morning and we found it was just seized up which is why a lot of we think why a lot of the pipe work over the far side of the building weren't working so we put fitted this new pump in we've got the thorough flush connected in so let's turn it on and begin flushing a little bit out is there much coming out mate there was a nice colour you can see we've got a little bit of black crap coming out but what we'll do we'll begin flushing through now with the mains water it's obviously coming in in here in through the thorough flush and as i said before we can just switch the direction like that so that popped out that bog mace nah, do it again. so we're yeah, flushing we we're flushing one way around so coming out that so the dump hose is going through the magnet so if there's any magnetite coming through. Yeah. 
that we can drag it out but what it'll also do as well is drag and flush through the chemicals the four liters of chemicals that we put in yesterday so we'll carry on flushing this through and see how we go there we go you can see it flushing all the crap out at the minute so what we've done now we've isolated all the downstairs radiators so we've got all the rads upstairs now running through the thorough flush and uh, we can flick the direction as and when these changing just to shift the direction of the water the flow and the return so that it just agitates and moves the water within the rads upstairs and just helps flush out all the crap from it here there and everywhere and you'll see every now and again some big lumps of crap that are coming through and obviously on the way out it's been caught by that magna cleanse unit so as you can see the mains water we've got coming off i just disconnected the uh, washing machine and come off the washing machine hose through and into here but we've just spent the last probably hour or so flushing through upstairs we started coming out of crap and that's a little bit of crap again uh, you can see it's just still pulling a little bit of the cleaner out and a little bit of dirt out you just pull it out a little bit you see a little bit of colour and when that's running completely clear we know we're uh, we're getting somewhere on that top floor. So there you go, that's the top floor, completely flushed out, that is crystal clear now. So now we know the top floor is done, we can switch all the rads off on the top floor and then begin, there you go, be begin doing the two sections downstairs. So what we do now is shut down all the rads upstairs on this top floor. There's loads in each room as you'll have seen. Mason's downstairs opening up the rads downstairs. So it's the top four flush through. We know this is all nice and clean. We're going to concentrate on downstairs now. So we're on the final leg now. We're doing the runs downstairs. So, yeah, just a bit of dirt coming through that one. But it's just time consuming now, going round, doing each rad one at a time but we know it's completely flushing every one of them out. We've near enough finished that side of the building. After that, it'll be these, this one, and then these few down here. Right, we're on the last rad, the final one. I think it is this one. So at the minute, everything's running through here. So we'll switch this one off, and then Mason will open that one up. That's the last rad on my whole system so we'll see exactly what's coming through this one it'll take a couple of minutes for it to work all the way around the system but start to show in here but then once that's done what we'll do we'll go around and open up every single rad in the building again run it for 10 minutes or so just to make sure if there's any little bits knocking around anywhere it's coming through now just see if there's any bits knocking around anywhere and then at that point we can disconnect everything Check the magna cleanse unit to see what we've caught from the dump hose of the thorough flush. Then we can get the magna clean or whatever. Is it a magna clean? No, it's a Tapex Centre Mag. Never seen one of them before. But we'll get that back on and then get the system up, get some heat back in it. And obviously we've got the new pump on it. Before anyone says, yes, it's upside down because it's on the flow, the original one that we took out was on that on the flow for whatever reason so we've just replicated it put it back in that one works the other one didn't so it's definitely going to be an improvement but yeah we'll get the heat onto the system and then we can begin balancing the rads out and get it all set up so that seems to be the last little bit of dirty water or chemicals or whatever that's coming out of the system to be fair that's not too bad because we have flushed through everything in the system and if that's what's coming out the final rad we know that every other rad in the building is clean and this is what's coming out so we'll finish getting that out and then we'll crack on so we've got the heating now back up and running we've disconnected the thorough flush off the system cleaned all that down we've just got the heating on so we're going to leave this to run up for a good hour two hours or so and then get it balanced but as i was saying mason's just checked in the magna clean now this is obviously this was on the dump hose so everything that was coming through this was being dumped out of the system and we still caught a little bit of crap coming out as you can see pretty pleased with that mate aren't we yeah 
Yeah. But it just goes to show, even though the system's been catching everything overnight, just by then putting the thorough flush on and flushing it through with that, with the mains water, back and forth, clockwise, anti-clockwise, and then dumping it out through that, it still catches a little bit, which would have obviously gone to drain. Um, but yeah, so them thorough flush kits are pretty handy to put through a system as well. So, at least we now know every single radiator in the building has been flushed through. All the chemicals are out of the system. We filled it back up and we're just running it up. Then what we'll do when we found everything is fine, running perfectly, we'll take a rad off upstairs or drain a rad off upstairs, put the inhibitor in and then do a last checks everywhere and make sure it's all getting hot. Take thermal imaging cameras, have a good look round and make sure it's up to uh, temperature. So we've got heat into the system now. It's been on for 20 minutes or so, but it will take a while. Because the mains flush has put mains cold water in that is very cold, it's gonna take a while to begin to get the heat back through the system. But it's coming through. As you can see on this one, there's a dead spot in the middle, but the heat is still finding its way through to these rads. Yeah, this one is coming through. So what we'll do, we'll leave it for an hour or so while we have a tidy up. Then we can come around, start checking the rads, get them balanced up and push some heat to the ones that we know struggle like down the far end of the building. So we're at the balancing stage now. Balancing this system with 36, 37 radiators on is quite the challenge to be honest. Now, what I'm trying to do is, I don't know if you can pick this one up. This one is, the hottest point in this rad is 37 degrees and then the lowest flow, uh, the lowest temperature on the return is 36, uh, 35. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and turn these ones down to around 30, 31 degrees. This is the same on this one. What have we got? Hottest temperature is 37. And just wait, it calculates. And the bottom is 33. So again, I'm gonna, just gonna balance these down ever so slightly for the minute, just on the lock shear wheels, because these none of these rads have got thermostatic valves on, which is, Mason's obviously mentioned it to the customer. So I've turned that all the way down and just cracked it a quarter of a turn. And I'm gonna do that with that one, this one, I think this one's the same. Yeah, 37 degrees, and the return Sort of 27, 28, we'll leave that one just a minute just to get warmer. But again with this, we can crank this one down. I'm gonna turn that luxury right down, just quarter turn it open. Basically this room is lovely and warm. This one seems to have the majority of temperature in. So we balance these rads down, push the temperature down to around 30 degrees, which will then in turn push the heat further round into the building because it hasn't got to come here as much. It'll push it that way. As we sort of worked out, there's three zones on this heating system, all controlled by one stat, which is down in one of the rooms, which they're gonna have to move because that, that, when that room comes up to temperature, which is very, very lightly, it will shut the whole building off. So we've advised them to move that as well, but predominantly we're here just to flush the system through and get it running. They had five or six rads that never got hot. They're now getting nice and hot, but yeah, we've just balanced this room out. So in turn, what have we got on this one? So again, yeah, this is red iron here. And it's only a tiny little room, it's that little cloak room. So again, I'm gonna, so again, I'm gonna throttle this one down, just quarter turn it open, yeah, it's red iron. And then I'm just go and push a bit of heat into rooms like this. Obviously there's two outside walls and they're quite, there's no carpet in these rooms, so it's gonna, you know, suck in a lot of the heat and the temperature. And I think I've already mentioned, we have said to them to leave the grills off as much as they can. I'm not sure how it works with having kids in the nursery with kids touching rads and that, but that's gonna sap a lot of the heat anyway. But yeah, this room, because we've shut the other one off, yeah, this one's sort of steady at 30 degrees. Again, with that one, that's sort of 30 degrees. But yeah, these thermal imaging cameras, this is where they come into their own. This is the Hick Micro Pocket 2 hole. I'll bang a link in the description below, but these are great little devices. So they're not cheap, but if you're doing a lot of system flushes, they're well worth the money. Yeah, that one's 30 degrees. 
So yeah, balancing a, a system like this can be a bit of a pain, but yeah, we're gonna go around. Again, this one can go down a little bit. But yeah, we're gonna go around now, continue balancing, it's just very time consuming, but vital to getting all the rads nice and warm. Right, I'm pretty pleased with that now. Every radiator in the building is between 34, give or take, 32 and 34, with a, a temperature drop between the rad of about five degrees. So this is the room that they were struggling the most with, all of these radiators now in here. Got one there, one there, one over there, one there, all coming up to sort of 32 degrees. So now with the system running, we'll leave it for a couple of hours, make sure it's picking up all the way through. Every rad is staying pretty stable, which they are, you know, I've been through them for the last hour or so, they're all pretty stable. But yeah, balancing a 36 rad heating system. Uh, we've put a new pump on as well, because the old one jammed up. Um, and just burnt out, it was just red hot. They're gonna be happy because they don't, I know for a while, five or six of the rads weren't working at all, but yeah, we've got a few little pointers for them. A couple of rads are showing little bits of um, corrosion and stuff on them, so we'll point that out. But yeah, it's been a good job. I've enjoyed it. Shout out to Mace for getting me involved in this one. As I said, I'll put all his details below. Go and give him a follow on Instagram. He's a cracking young lad coming through. It's about supporting, you know, young lads coming into the game as well as us. I say old boys, I'm 40 five in two weeks time so yeah you know bit of guidance i've pointed him in a few directions i've showed him the thorough flush how it works how to connect into the magna cleanse so i think he's going to end up buying a thorough flush unit as well and also one of these thermal imaging cameras so yeah it's all finished shout out to mace for getting me involved in this um as i said go into a description below and i'll put mace's details in there on instagram mace ain't ya on is Instagram. it just Instagram? Just Instagram. Just don't do TikTok. Don't do TikTok. Just I'm Instagram. Facebook. YouTube. Instagram. Is there a YouTube channel coming? No, I'm sharing one now. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll put all Macy's details below. Go and give him a follow. He's a cracking lad. Um, and look at some of his content coming through on Instagram as well. So I hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. All that jazz. You know what to do. And uh, I shall catch you all on the next one.